What is up YouTube and welcome to another video. Now in this video I want to make a similar video to what I've done with the Python folks. This one specifically is for the .NET and C Sharp folks and what we're going to be doing is creating an application from scratch. So no lines of code, we're going to build up a small application and then we're going to go, I'm taking you through the steps of how to go from zero lines of code straight into Kubernetes and show you step by step um, how to write the code build up a deployment, deploy a Kubernetes cluster, and then deploy that um, just using a Windows machine. So without further ado, let's go. Right, so the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need Windows. We're gonna to have to enable Hyper-V. We're going to install Docker. We're gonna install Kubernetes, and then we're gonna install the command line utility called kubectl to run Kubernetes commands and basically work with our cluster. So if you're on Windows, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to the control panel, go to programs, go to turn Windows features on or off, and then you'll be presented with this um, little Windows feature section and you wanna make sure you've got Hyper-V turned on, all these tick boxes. Um, and then what you wanna go ahead and do is go over to the Docker, um, website search for docker for windows and then go ahead and install docker desktop that will install docker and give you a little system icon in the system tray um, where you can start up docker once that is running you can get to the docker settings so you can see here i have some general settings i've got share drives you're going to want to make sure you share your c drive or whatever drive your code is on and then the most important section is you want to make sure you have Kubernetes and you have enabled Kubernetes. This will give you a Kubernetes cluster. Um, it will install kubectl, configure it for you, and also point it to your Docker for desktop. Once you have Kubernetes up and running, you can also go and install the latest version of kubectl if you want. Um, you can just go ahead and search for kubectl download. Just go ahead and go to this website. It's on the Kubernetes website. And you can pick your OS here. We'll just pick kubectl on Windows. Go ahead and download this. And what you want to do is add it to your path environment variable. So if you search for environment variables, you'll go to the system properties, environment variables, and you can either switch, um, the, you can either set the variable for your user or for your entire system. So I normally just go onto the system one and I've created a folder called kubectl under C. And if we go over to that folder, kubectl exe has been downloaded in that path. So that is how I can then open up the command line in PowerShell. So if we go over to PowerShell, I can just type kubectl and it will work. So that's how you install and configure kubectl. So we're literally going to start from scratch. So I created this git folder under my C drive and I created a C sharp folder. And the first thing I'm going to do is open this folder in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to create a new subfolder called um, source because I like to keep my source code separate from my Docker file and everything else. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a Docker file. Okay, so because we don't have .NET installed on our machine or inside of our Docker container, we're going to go ahead to Docker Hub, search for the .NET Core SDK, and I'm going to go ahead and um, take this image. And then I'm going to go ahead to my Docker file and say from and paste that image. Then what we're going to want to do is create a Docker Compose file. And inside here, we describe our server C Sharp. We say how to build it. So the context is dot, meaning the current working directory. And then we give it a name. Now, when you create a Docker Hub account, you will have your own username. So you can put your own username in here. That'll allow you to build and push the image to your Docker repo. And that'll make it easy for Kubernetes to download your image. Then we're going to expose port 5000 because I'm going to be running a web app in this example. Then to build the image, I'm going to go ahead to the terminal and I'm going to say Docker Compose Build. And that will go ahead and download um, the SDK so long. So it'll run this first command in the Docker file. So while that is building, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to specify a volume. Because we don't have any source code, we're going to want to go ahead and generate some source code using .NET command. So we're going to fire up this Docker container. We're going to mount in our empty folder into a folder into the container. And then we're just going to create a folder called slash work. 
and then we're going to set the working directory to slash work that means when this container starts up it'll automatically be in that work folder and we can start generating source code so now that our image is built i'm going to add these three lines to the docker compose file that'll allow us to start up the container and then attach ourselves to it in a terminal so that we can run some dotnet commands because i don't have any source code um, so i'm going to say dotnet uh, docker compose up that will attach to the image and then in another window i'm going to do docker ps and we can see our image is now running so i grab the container id and i say docker exec it with the container id and i say bash that'll give me a bash terminal into the container and now i'm in the work directory in the work folder so i'm technically inside our source directory now there's no files in there so what we're going to want to do is say net new and then i'm going to create a web app so run that and that'll generate some source code for us um, now notice i don't have net installed so this is all happening inside the container so that's the beauty about the container now what i can do is say i can say net restore I can say .NET build and I could potentially do .NET run as well um, but I'm not going to do that for now so I'm just going to build up my code make sure everything works and I can then go and exit out of the container then I can go ahead back to this docker compose file and I can probably remove or comment this out because I don't need it anymore and what I want to do is inside my docker file is create a copy command and then copy dot slash source into slash work i can also say work directory slash work so i set the working directory to slash work i copy my source code in now before i create the working directory i first have to create the directory first and then set it to um, work directory and then what i'm going to want to go ahead and do is before i copy in all my source code i want to do dot net restore so first thing we're going to do is say copy source and it's called worker.cs project so copy the cs project file into the container first and then what we're going to want to go ahead and do is say net restore now that means that this will only run once so we're using docker layering um, and the docker image cache to make sure that this image when it builds we don't keep doing dotnet restore over and over and over it's only when our project file changes so when we add new libraries that we want to pull with NuGet, um, that is when that file will actually go ahead and restore and then we copy the rest of the source code in and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create like an out folder where we want to put all the out the artifacts basically and then what i'm going to go ahead and do then is say run dotnet publish um, on that out to that out directory and i want to build it in um, release mode now this docker file should be ready to be built so we can say docker compose build and you can see it's basically gone and built so it created our work directory it copied all our files in it created an out directory and then it ran dotnet publish into the out folder so now inside this image we have an out directory with all the dll's that we can copy into an image to run our code um, in production so once again um, i'm going to head over to the dotnet core um, docker hub and i'm going to look for the um the ASP.NET Core runtime. Now, the reason I want the runtime is I don't want the SDK in my image that we're going to be deploying to Kubernetes. I want the image to be as light as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and cr and take this one. This is the runtime for ASP.NET. And then what I can do is say from this image, and we can make that as prod. So that is our becomes our production image. And from here on, it's very, very simple. I then go ahead and I say create a app directory and then make that my working directory similar to what we did above and then we want to use the copy command to copy out from the dev image so we can go ahead and tag this one as dev and we want to copy from the dev image everything in that out folder that we produced we want to copy that into the app folder and then i want to also because we're in linux you got to give it execution rights in order to start and then we can just say command.net and run our application so this should be good enough to run the app now given we have our docker file ready we can do docker compose build that'll go ahead and build the production image now we have a runtime lightweight asp.net image with our dlls attached and we have a, a command to start up that code so 
to run it all i need to do is say docker compose up and look at that now just up it's running and it's listening on port 80. now you notice in our docker compose file we said we want port 5000 now there's a little trick to doing that we got to go into our app um, into the program.cs and you can see here where it says where it says create default builder what you're going to want to go ahead and do is just say use urls and you're just going to pass http forward slash forward slash and we're just going to go star 5000 so this is how you can configure now you can load this from like an app settings file or somewhere else i'm just going to do this and i'm going to go ahead now and kill that image i'm going to say docker compose build again that will go ahead and compile and notice now when i say docker compose up we're now starting on 5000 it's also important for when you're running inside of a container to bind to star so that you get this kind of binding instead of localhost that'll allow the container image to bind to the right um, basically the right address i can then go to localhost 5000 in the browser and make sure my asp net is up and running right so everything is now working now in order for a kubernetes to access our image we have to say docker compose push so this will push the image to my docker hub account and once that's running kubernetes can then pull and run the image now before we start with kubernetes you're going to want to make sure um, your Kubernetes is up and running. So you want to say kubectl get nodes and you should see the Docker for desktop node showing up. Then what we want to do is create a new folder called Kubernetes and we can keep all our infrastructure basically definitions in here. So I want to go ahead and create a new file called deployment.yaml and this will describe our deployment and desired states and how Kubernetes will manage our application for us. And then we'll also want to create another file called service.yaml. And this is how we expose our service to the outside world, as well as to services inside of Kubernetes. Now I've created a very, very basic, simple deployment.yaml. So we can see our kind is deployment. We have some labels that we define. Labeling is important for allowing other objects to select this deployment. I'll get to that in a second when we get to services. What we want to do is define a label again a label selector for called app equals example app that means all our pods that run will have a label called example app and all these pods will belong to this deployment we also say we want a minimum of two instances we want a rolling style deployment so by defining this kubernetes will know to roll out application one at a time and make sure that there's always one application up and running and taking traffic so during deployment you can make sure that your um, people that are served that are hitting this website are not experiencing any outage during deployment or any interruptions we here specify the labels for the for the pods and now we specify the containers so i'm saying here i'm going to call it example application this is my image name this is the same image we have built and pushed um, to docker hub we also say we want to pull the image always you can also um, leave this out in kubernetes will always only pull it when it exists on the node so it'll use the local docker cache we then specify container port 5000 and here we specify our resource requests and limits so we tell kubernetes that by default we are going to need at least 64 megs of ram and 50 millicores of cpu and we set the maximum as well so this allows kubernetes to make smarter decision when to deploy our application when we pass the request and the limit allows us to restrict noisy neighbors so when our application uses too much memory kubernetes will restart our application so we don't have to so the first thing we want to do in kubernetes is say kubectl create um, namespace and we want to create a namespace where we can put all our resources in otherwise they will all live in the default namespace so i create a namespace with my name and then i'm going to say kubectl dash in my name because i want to apply this to um, to my namespace and i say apply dash f and i point to the kubernetes deployment file now kubernetes has gone ahead and created this deployment so if i say kubectl um, get deploy we can see there's no deployments in there because we have to select our namespace and when we see that we can see our application is up and running there are two out of two pods so we are two replicas two of them are running so now 
we can select again our namespace and say get pods and notice that both of my pods are running and I can in turn say kubectl logs with the name of the pod and notice here this is the same um, log we saw when we were running it in docker compose so now our application is up and running now at this point our application cannot be accessed by other pods and cannot be accessed by the outside world now in order to do this we have to define a service if you want to know more about services check the link in the description i have a full kubernetes series about deployments pods config maps secrets and um, services so i basically go down into depth about each one of these concepts so now we define our service. Now look at this. We say here that we want to select our example app. So this service will select all the pods that have this label. So by default now, this will select our two pods that we've deployed. We also don't want to expose um, port 5000 to the outside world because we don't want the customer to care about port numbers. So we're just going to go with 80 in this case, and we're going to map 80 to 5000. So I'm going to go ahead and save that guy. And now what I want to do is say kubectl and I want to say my namespace and I want to say apply dash F and we're going to pass in the Kubernetes folder and with the service.yaml. So by doing this, I can now say kubectl get services and we can see our services up and running. And when I say kubectl describe service with the name of the service we can see our service is running and this is how you troubleshoot it so you make sure that you have at least two endpoints that means our selector has worked if you mistype the labels your selector won't work and you'll have blank endpoints so that means no traffic will come to your pods so at this point we can see now we have two endpoints it's up and running now how do i expose this to the outside world now in order to do that i can go to the spec and i can say type load balancer now in our case here, because we're not running in the cloud, Kubernetes will know that we're running locally. So it will just export localhost as a load balancer. If you're running in the cloud like Azure or AWS, Kubernetes will actually go and provision a load balancer and give you a public IP that you can give to like, you can bind to like a DNS or something and then serve that to the outside world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reapply my service. You see our service has been configured and then when I say get service, we now see that we're exposing this as a load balancer over an external IP. In our case, it's local host. And this time I'm going to open up port 80 and notice that we're now accessing our application inside Kubernetes through a public service. And that's hitting our deployment, which has two pods with our Docker images. So that is basically, folks, how you go from zero code into kubernetes with ease so anyways folks hope you enjoyed that video and hopefully that um, explains how to go very quickly from zero lines of code straight into kubernetes now if you want to check out um, and understand the details and in depth check the links below to my kubernetes development guide we actually go down all of the details um, quite in depth so help you to understand and make informed decisions when you want to start working with containers and Kubernetes in production. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Like and subscribe. And until next time, peace. peace.